event. I remember listening and watching Dick Bennett early on, and he said the first decision he had to make was how to defend the post, because this would tell him how to defend every action. Obviously, the game today is less reliant on the post, but I think it's still a strong example to start our discussion on how one coverage relates to the next. So let's start down here on the post. We have a player posting up, and how we guard this player posting up is going to determine how we're going to guard the ball. So let's say, for example, we're going to three-quarters deny this player. Well, we have to think, what are we giving up in terms of this post defender's help? Obviously, if this player was to drive baseline, our post defender may be sealed out of this helping position, or he might even be late to react and disengage to step over the help. So if we are to three-quarters deny the post, then on ball, if we have our player guard the ball, it only makes sense then to take away the baseline drive. Because now if this player is to go middle, at least our post player can disengage and help. The added benefit of taking away the baseline drive on ball to a three-quarters deny is it's also making the post entry pass on the baseline very difficult, which is what we're giving up in our post. If we're a team, however, that wants to force baseline, then obviously how we guard the post needs to change. We need to either front the post so that on baseline drives we can step up to help, or we need to three quarters deny from the low side. So again, we can step over the help and take away a middle entry pass into the post. So this is how one concept can relate to the next. How we guard the post should mirror how we guard the ball. And let's take it a step further to off ball. Let's say the ball is up top and we're in the gap now. Again, we want to put our players in the best position to defend. So how we guard in the gap should connect to how we guard on the ball. So let's say we're a low sagging gap. Think of the pack line defense. Then on this closeout, it makes sense that we can take away the low shoulder and the baseline drive. Whereas if we take a step back, go ahead, and we're a team that and we're a team that heavy denies in the passing lanes even one step further, then on this pass, obviously our best angle to close out is the high shoulder, therefore forcing the baseline. And then if we're forcing the baseline, our post player needs to be taken away the low side. This is just one example that Dick Bennett brought up early on and how the post should really dictate how you guard the ball. But today's game is not as reliant on the post. It's more reliant on dribble penetration and the ball screen. So let's talk about how we're going to guard the ball screen and how that relates to how we guard the ball. So let's have a ball screen action. <clears throat> If we're a team that forces middle and takes away the baseline, then our pick and roll coverages can react in a way that funnels the ball handler into the ball screen. So the coverages we can use are ones that are hedging, trapping, or even dropping and chasing over the top. Whereas if we're a team that forces baseline, even higher, then it might make sense to heavily ice these ball screens or switch them. And why would we switch it for forcing baseline? Well, let's say the ball handler comes up, our defender's here, come off the screen, and we switch. Now on this roll, if we're forcing baseline on this roll, we can get in a good position to front or three quarters the knife from the low side. That's why it's more difficult to switch and guard the post if you're forcing middle, taking away baseline. <clears throat> Take a step back to this pick and roll. I know a lot of coaches, their ball screen coverages might not mirror their on-ball defense. And they use the term flipping your hips. So let's take a step back just so we can see this. If we're a team that forces baseline, we might tell our players on a ball screen, we want you to flip your hips to prepare for the hedge or the trap or whatever ball screen coverage we're going to use. Flipping your hips, of course, looks like this as the ball screen comes. But there are flaws to this. Let's go back. Let's say this player doesn't flip his hips. He doesn't execute our defensive fundamentals. 
Well, then on this ball screen, the ball handler may reject the screen, therefore putting two defenders out of the play. We come back to it. It might not even be the on-ball's defender's fault if he doesn't flip his hips, because now we're also relying on the communication being early and loud. If this communication is late just a second, this player might not flip his hips in time to take away the rejected ball screen. Of course, if you're playing a great player, he can even take advantage of a player, a defender, who flips his hips correctly. So let's say we are going against a great offensive player. He might wait for the exact moment when this player flips his hip to use the ball screen, therefore putting this defender one step behind the action. Go back to it. <clears throat> and not only when you face a great player will you be at a disadvantage to a flaw in your defensive system, but when you play against great coaches, they can scheme to exploit your poor defensive system. So let's go to a down screen to really show this. Ball's up the top. Again, you want our defensive systems to help our players defend to their best ability. So let's have this post player defender take a, uh, take a step off. <clears throat> we're going to look at how we're going to guard a down screen. Just right now, our thought is our coverage on the down screen and how we guard the ball. So let's say this cutter comes off and we're tagging, chasing this cutter. As he catches it, you can see the defender is in position to take away baseline and funnel middle. <clears throat> if we go back to that down screen and say we're a team that shoots the gap on down screens, then on this catch, the defender is only in position to recover to force baseline. So that's just one example of how we want our off-ball screen coverages to put our defenders in position to guard the ball how we want them to. Let's go back to the down screen. Let's add a post defender this time. Like I said, when you play a great offensive coach, he's going to pair actions together to take away flaws in your defensive system. It might be a down screen right into an immediate ball screen. And so let's say we're a team that shoots the gap, forces baseline, but our ball screen coverage is the hedge. This would be a great way to exploit that defense. The down screen occurs. We shoot the gap. We're forcing baseline. The immediate ball screen comes, and this immediate action is going to make our players, it could really delay our players' ability to flip their hips in time because this communication might be late. The screen might catch the defender off guard, so the reject is going to be there all day. If we're a team that forces baseline and shoots the gap, then on these immediate actions, we need to be a team that ices ball screens so that one coverage connects to how we guard ball, and how we guard ball connects to how we guard the pick and roll. When creating our defensive system as coaches, we need to think about these things so that we can build defensive systems that lay a strong foundation to guard every action and put our players in the best position to defend at their best.